Hi everyone, my name is Deb. Welcome to my very first YouTube video. We are going to be flipping this top hutch into a cabinet. And this is inspired by a cabinet that Salvage by Kay Scott did. She is amazing. Go check her out if you haven't watched her before. And I hope you guys enjoy my process in this video. So as you can see, there's some trim missing. We will be removing all of that trim so that way it's nice and flat. When we went to pick up this hutch and sideboard, uh, unfortunately it didn't fit into our vehicle and the glass was broken, but I did have a backup. I wanted to kind of do the burlap anyways, um, but once I broke the glass, we were definitely doing the burlap. Now everything is in great shape. So to start, we're just removing this trim piece. And then there was some wood stuck over. So just again, using that multi-tool with the hammer and kind of scraping off as much as I can to avoid having to sand it. Um, sanding would probably take way longer than just getting off as much as you can first. And then I'm just measuring where I wanna cut off the base. And before I cut off the base, I just have to get these doors out of the way. I should have probably taken the doors off to begin with, but I wasn't thinking and now here we are taking them off. And I'm just using a Black & Decker jigsaw. A circular saw would have been much easier, but I don't have one, so this is the next best thing. And I laid the piece down just to get all around the sides. And then when I pulled it up, it was still on there just a little bit, but as soon as I did pull it up, it broke right off. It's already starting to look much better. And that made quite the mess, so I'm just vacuuming up all that sawdust that came off from, from taking the base off. And make sure to vacuum out the inside, because there was dust everywhere. And now I'm just using some hot water with Dawn dish soap. This cabinet, uh, it really wasn't very dirty, so dish soap will work perfectly fine. And always wipe off with a clean cloth after you're done cleaning it with any type of cleaning solution. And making sure to take off any hinges on the doors. There can be lots of dirt and grime underneath of hinges, so I always recommend taking off the doors and not painting over the hinges. I just find it makes it look sloppy when you do that. And now I'm just using an 80 grit sandpaper just to get off any of that dried glue. Um, and extra wood that was kind of stuck on there. It was taking a little bit longer than I was anticipating, so then I just laid the piece down and took my carbine scraper to scrape off anything that I couldn't get with my multi-tool and hammer. And since we took the trim off, there is a bit of a gap, so I'm just sanding it down with some 80 grit to make sure it's all smooth. And there was some spots where I just needed to use some Bondo all-purpose putty. So this is a two-part system and you just mix it thoroughly before applying it. It is good to work in a well-ventilated area and wear a respirator because this stuff stinks. Once it dries, I'm just taking an 80 grit because this stuff is super hard. So an 80 grit will get through there quickly. Next up, I flip the cabinet upside down and I'm just cutting some square pieces of wood just to bring the cabinet up a little bit because there's a bit of a half inch gap. So I will be putting these underneath of the cabinet and I'm just drilling some pilot holes so that way the wood doesn't split and screwing them into the base. 
As you can see, there's already a hold there. It's because I screwed up. I thought I wanted the legs flush with the cabinet, but it didn't look right. So I'm just drilling new holes and putting in the leg hardware. Because I had screwed up, I just wanted to make sure that it was level. So just using a leveler to make sure that the cabinet's not gonna be all wonky when I put it upright. Finally putting on the furniture legs. I am so happy to do this because I screwed up and uh, it was not fun having to fix it. So just make sure that you're always measuring twice, cutting once. Now it looks so good. So now that I finally got the furniture legs on, I'm just sanding the piece down with a 220. Just scuff sanding helps the paint adhere better. You should always scuff sand prior to painting, just an extra insurance to make sure that your finish is going to last for years and years to come. I measured and cut the backer board with a jigsaw. And since the jigsaw is not the greatest of cuts, I did just sand down the edges with my sander. We're finally to prime time. I feel like it took forever to get to this point, but finally here. I did scuff sand the legs as well, as you can tell. And then just make sure when you're doing the doors, you really want to do light coats. When you're doing any piece, do light coats. Uh, but the doors especially, it, you can get a lot of drips when you're doing the doors. So you just want to do light coats. Never try to get full coverage on the first go around. And always wear a respirator. This stuff is quite smelly as well. So after the first coat of primer, like I thought, I could see more spots. So I just did some wood filler and sanded that down once it dried. And with this wood filler, I just used 220. It's nearly not as hard as the Bondo gets, so a 220 got through it just fine. Once I was done sanding, I wiped down the piece with a damp rag and then reprimed. And once the primer dried, I just took a sanding sponge to knock down any of that texture left over from the roller. I'm just feeling with my hand to make sure it's all smooth. And again, we're gonna take a damp rag to wipe off any of that dust. I did move my piece inside. We are in the Canadian cold and it is freezing in the garage. The primer, it holds up well in cold temperatures. Make sure you read your can. Um, I used bin shellac based primer and that can be used in a colder temperature. And we are using House and Canvas Underground. Love this color. It absolutely looked fantastic going on and has really great coverage and levels out really nicely. Again, just make sure you're not trying to get full coverage with the first go around. If you are, you're putting way too much paint on. I really like using a roller. I find the texture that it gets afterwards is really smooth. I'm not much of a hand brush kind of gal. Um, so I really, really like the, the rollers. I find it makes quick work of everything too. It's way faster than using a brush, but I do use a brush for any little areas that I can't reach with the roller. Please take a moment to like and subscribe, share with your furniture friends. It would mean a lot. I am a new channel, so sharing, liking, subscribing really will help me out. Thanks so much. I hope you uh, enjoy this video so far. And I did tape off the inside as you can tell. I didn't remove it after the primer just because it's a waste of tape and I knew the primer was probably going to bleed through. Um, so there was just really no point in having to remove the tape and then putting it on again. I did end up having to do about two and a half coats, so two and a touch up. Yeah. 
and uh, I do put my stuff in a bag and tie it up until I'm ready to go for my next coat. I did fix a few spots with some wood filler again I just wasn't happy with a few little spots that showed up after I had done the first coat so I'm just sanding it and then wiping it clean. And now we're removing the tape and uh, like I knew we have some primer bleed through. It's so thin that it just bleeds right through anything. Any tape I use, it always just bleeds through, but I'm just taking a brand new sharp razor blade and just getting off as much as I can. And I did end up sanding it just a little bit as well. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. I'm just cleaning up the hardware with some Barkeeper's Friend. I did boil the hardware in half vinegar, half water, and it ended up giving me a really gross white skim coat all over everything. It was so difficult to remove, and I had to use the Barkeeper's Friend and then polish it up afterwards, and I still couldn't get some of that white film off. So I don't know why that happened. If you do know, please just leave a comment letting me know. I would love to find out what the heck happened. We're using Verithane Diamond Wood Finish in Satin. I really love this top coat. And I do mix in a little bit of paint with my top coats for darker colors just to avoid any streaking that could happen. And make sure you do mix it thoroughly. If you don't, you'll end up getting streaks. So you really want to make sure that paint is mixed in with the top coat. And I'm just using a Country Chic sponge. And I did dampen it with some water before doing my top coat. You want to go in long strokes just to avoid any streaking and don't go over the spot that you had just done or else you will get some streaking and it goes on kind of milky but it will dry clear and i did cut the burlap off camera i just kind of cut a two inch excess because i will be taking that off and i'm just kind of fitting it into the door the nice thing is that the board is quite a tight fit so it, uh, it worked really well. I just barely pulled the burlap and stapled it and just kind of kept flipping it over to be able to see if it was pulled tightly and then stapled it as I went. I thought maybe a Dremel would work well in removing this and getting a really clean cut, but it was just taking way too long that I ended up grabbing that razor blade and cutting it. And I'm sorry, my big arm's in the way. Um, I didn't realize that and I had these little pieces of wood when I removed the glass that I broke and um, luckily it covered up all of the staples and it made a really clean finish. So I'm just using some Dixie Belle Big Mama's Butter. This stuff smells amazing. I'm just putting it on the inside just to freshen it up. We are almost at the finish line. I'm looking at the finished piece and I honestly just it's hard to believe sometimes that that's what you get out of what you make. All your hard work pays off. So we're finally putting that shelf in because we are almost done. I put the doors back on and let's take another look at the before. Ugly old hutch top. These things are so outdated and it's so nice to split it into two to make such a beautiful piece. And here's the after. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video i loved making this cabinet i definitely want to keep it but i will be selling it uh, so don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel for more amazing furniture flips thank you so much for getting this far in the video and i will see you guys next time